For this problem, we're going to try to calculate the escape gravity for Earth. So we're given the mass of the Earth and its radius, and we want to determine the minimum velocity that is required for a rocket to escape Earth's gravity. So let's draw a picture. Let's say this is the Earth. If you're on the Earth and you throw a rock, the rock is going to go up and then it's going to go back down. But if by some miracle you can throw it fast enough, which is probably not going to happen, but if you can get to a point where the velocity is high enough, it can escape Earth's gravity and not come back down. We want to calculate what that velocity is. How fast should an object be going in order to escape Earth's gravity? In order to calculate it, we need to use conservation of energy. So the initial total energy must be equal to the final total energy. Now the two types of energies we're going to be dealing with are kinetic and potential. So we have initial kinetic energy and initial potential energy. That is going to equal final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy. Now, in order for the object to escape Earth's gravity, the distance is going to be basically infinitely far. Potential energy can be described by this equation. It's equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the rocket times the mass of the Earth divided by the distance between them. So let's say we have two objects. Here's the Earth and here is the rocket that's trying to leave the Earth. We'll call this capital M. That's the mass of the Earth and lowercase m will be the mass of the rocket. Whenever you have two objects, there's going to be gravitational potential energy between them. So because the rocket has the ability to fall back to the Earth, it has gravitational potential energy. And this is one way you can calculate that gravitational potential energy. The other way is using this formula, mgh, which is similar to this equation, but this includes gravitational acceleration instead of the universal gravitation constant. The initial kinetic energy of the rocket is going to be 1 half m the initial squared. The initial potential energy is going to be this formula, but we're going to have a negative sign instead. So it's negative g, the mass of the rocket, times the mass of the Earth divided by r. The final kinetic energy and the final potential energy will be 0. Even if the rocket, if it escapes Earth's gravity with the minimum velocity possible, let's say it's just above zero, it will be good enough. So we could just set this to zero. Now as for the final potential energy, when it's very far away, R is going to be infinity. If R goes to infinity, this fraction goes to zero, so the final potential energy is zero. moving this equation or that expression to this side we're going to have one half m the initial squared is equal to g m times m over r dividing both sides by m we have this and then let's multiply both sides by two to get rid of the fraction now the last thing we need to do is take the square root of the equation so we get that the escape velocity is equal to the square root of 2 gm over r. So now let's go ahead and calculate it. So the universal gravitation constant is 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. The mass of the Earth is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. And the radius of the Earth which is the distance between the center of the Earth and a rocket, 
when the rocket blasts off from ground level is 6.3a times 10 to the 6. So let's go ahead and plug that in. For the escape velocity, I got 11,173 meters per second. So that's 11.173 kilometers per second, if you divide it by 1,000. So we can round it and say it's approximately 11.2 kilometers per second. So that is Earth's escape of velocity. If an object leaves the ground at that speed, and if you ignore the effects of air resistance, that object can escape Earth's gravity. Now, let's try a similar but slightly different problem. Mars has a radius of 3.39 times 10 to the 6 meters and a gravitational acceleration of 3.71 meters per second squared. What is the escape velocity of Mars? Now, the formula that we previously had was this. The escape velocity is equal to 2 times g times m over r. And we could still use that. But we're not given the mass of Mars. But it turns out that we could use a different variation of this formula. Gravitational acceleration is equal to g m over r squared. For those of you who want to know how you can derive that, you could use this. So let's say if you have two objects like the Earth and the Moon, there's going to be a gravitational force that pulls these two towards each other. And that gravitational force is equal to g m1 m2 over r squared. If you set this equal to the net force, where well you could set that equal to ma, you get this equation. If you cancel one of the masses, you get that the acceleration is equal to g times m over r squared. And that's how you can calculate the gravitational acceleration of the Earth. If you plug in 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times the mass of the Earth, which is 5.98 times 10 to the 24, or 5.97, and then divided by the radius of the Earth, which we had in the last problem, 6.38 times 10 to the 6 squared, you're going to get the gravitational acceleration of the Earth, which is about 9.8 meters per second squared. Now what we're going to do is we're going to readjust this equation. I'm going to multiply both sides by r squared. So we get g r squared is equal to gm. Now I'm going to replace gm with g r squared. So this becomes the square root of 2 g r squared over r. So we can cancel an r. So here is another variant of the escape velocity formula. It's equal to the square root of 2 times the gravitational acceleration times the radius of the planet. So it's 2 times 3.71 times 3.39 times 10 to the 6. So the escape velocity of Mars is 5,015 meters per second, or approximately, we could just say 5 kilometers per second. So that's how you can calculate the escape velocity of an object on any planet. If you know the mass and the radius of the planet, you could use this variation of the formula. If you know the gravitational acceleration and the radius of the planet, you could use that form of the equation.